Hi, you're listening to She Shield, your one-stop pod for all topics personal safety. I'm your host, Sophia, and my goal is to help educate women and men on concealed carry, martial arts, and all topics self-defense. This episode is sponsored by Big Tech's Ordnance, your soon-to-be favorite retailer for all of your firearms needs. BTO believes in only selling high-quality gear for responsibly armed citizens, as well as providing pre- and post-sale support. BTO values firearms training and supports firearms instructors nationwide. They even pay for your their own staff, your own staff, just kidding, their own staff to train with high-level instructors to ensure that when you as the consumer reach out, you are taken care of. Today, we have Tyler Tharp of the Synergy Training Group on the podcast. I'm so excited. Tyler and I got to meet at the Guardian Conference Uh Oh man, I always forget what month it is. It's last September. Oh, that was uh, September. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. September. Still kind of hot, but like we had some shade in Oklahoma, right. so it was really nice. Yeah. But Tyler, I mean, that's, that's north for me, so it's still like not hot. Okay. <laughs> right. It's perfect. Yes, and I'll get to see you there again this September. I'm so yep. excited. Well, absolutely. If you don't mind, Tyler, I would love for you to introduce yourself to the listeners. Yeah. So first off, thanks for having me. Uh, like you said, we met up at the uh, Guardian Conference, and I was like, "Oh, check out all these new new kids on the block," <laughs> and because uh, I'm also the new kid on the block, and yeah. Um, yeah so uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed talking to you and getting to know more about you, and we're we're still trying to get to know more about each other. Absolutely. Um, got to got to listen to about the Live Fire app, and that was really cool. Um, cause so it's done by like someone it. that I've, uh, I've looked up to for quite a long time, but yeah, as you said, I'm Tyler. I, uh, I am from Mississippi. I grew up right on the river actually in, uh, nice. the bottom of the Delta and, uh, just a little poor nowhere town type of thing. And, uh, yeah, it's got some, uh, interesting backgrounds of, uh, roller coaster type things. And yeah, now I'm serving the central Mississippi community and uh, bridging off into the the national market, trying to take this thing full time. So, nice. yes, yeah. I love to hear it. So what is your training background as far as like, where did you start mm-hmm. getting interested in firearms? Where did you start realizing you wanted to teach? I'd love to hear all yeah. of it. Well, so I right, as every country kid i grew up hunting and fishing with my grandpa my grandpa got me my first rifle when i was seven <clears throat> always hunting with him and whatnot and um both of my folks were in law enforcement my mom was an undercover state narc agent uh and then my dad uh did uh, homicide and narcotics uh, uh investigations for a small department it's just a thirty-five thousand person town uh police department and so my mom did the state level stuff and then did some stuff with the same department as well. She was injured and, um, she broke her back like twice. So oh she was uh, medically separated from that. And then my dad actually died in the line of duty in Oh nine. Mm-hmm. Um, so to hear that. yeah, so I, I, well, he, he, he died doing exactly what he loved, you know, like heart of gold. There's, there's over a thousand people at his funeral for a reason. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. Um, I, Two, two years before his passing, I actually signed up for the army and went in as an MP military police, um, did basic, went through almost all of AIT, destroyed my right leg, uh, mm-hmm. the tibia, um, and it did not heal right. So I ended up getting, uh, med boarded out of that. That was a heck of a long process. Yeah, um, sure. so I never deployed, never did anything cool. Um, but I was going that route. And of course that thing changed. Um, I was literally discharged on May 15th. Got home on the 16th. My dad died about 10 hours later, 2 a.m. on the 17th. So that was 100% divine intervention. My mom needed me to be home, and God was like, you got to get home. And that's 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 how that is. But I say, I'll say this, that's where I, got, I started. Right? That's where my mm-hmm. interest started. Yeah. <clears throat> of course, I didn't know anything. I just like, okay, guns are cool. I know how to be safe as safe as a 18 year old can be right right um, right i did okay in the army i um i qualified as best as i could with a 40 year old uh m16 a2 like uh old triangle handguard oh okay. god it was terrible um and then i qualified uh expert with the um the m9 bread 92 that thing was a hunk of junk i scored 48 out of 50 and when it was funny, my captain did not think this was funny, but I was always a sarcastic little 
E2, like, you know, we all are. But um, <laughs> I, I was, when I went and pulled my target and gave it to him and he counted out 48, I reached in my pocket and grabbed the two live rounds that wouldn't, uh, that the gun wouldn't shoot. And said, so here's the other two. And uh, <laughs> so he nice. was like, you just think you're just a little smart ass, don't you? Right, right. Well, I shot expert and didn't even have two rounds go off. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. That's awesome. um yeah, so at, believe it or not, after my dad died, I um, my mom, <clears throat> as our outlet, we got into competitive shooting. We had friends that did it, and we, it just it it worked out to where we kind of got into it, um, USPSA specifically. And this was you know 2010, so that's back when the USPSA was jamming, like we were having a good time, right? Yeah. Um. Like, I remember our state-level matches in Mississippi on Saturday night. We'd have three kegs of beer, a live band, and a 1,000 pounds of crawfish. That's and we still awesome. had to get up and shoot the next day. <laughs> like, <laughs> right, right. Of course. That's man, hilarious. USPSA was awesome back then. That's awesome. Um, so, anyway, long story short, my mom uh, eventually started talking to a gentleman named Rodney May, which was OG Team SIG back when SIG only had a two two six that was worth shooting. Um, <laughs> they didn't blow up though. Awesome. They broke lots oh, of nice. hammers and frames, but they didn't blow up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so he, uh, he was on the same team with Max Michelle back in the day, um, uh -huh. was a national level GM doing all the big area national matches. And then, uh, taught at, uh, was a range master at, uh, mid South shooting Institute in North Mississippi. So all military law enforcement training, mostly CQB stuff. Uh, I say mostly like 90%. Uh, shoot house stuff. Uh, and then he is, he's had many training contracts through all the alphabet soups and different mill groups, um, like NSW, Navy, Naval Special Warfare groups and so on and so forth. So I got all of my formal training. Like I got my start in training with him because he has his own private range in Vicksburg, which is oddly enough where I'm from sort of. Nice. So we didn't realize that that even existed right down the road this whole time. And, uh, but anyway, so I, I, I learned everything I could learn from him over many years, basically apprenticed under him, got to teach with him at times. Like I remember going and teaching the, uh, high risk DOC transport team, uh, two day class up in Cannon city, Colorado, the super max prison up there. That was, God, that was so cool. Like, I, like yeah, you got to sure. check your phones when you go in type of things. You couldn't even have like phones yeah. and whatnot, uh, on this mini tier super max prison that had its own training facility within like the first uh, area of it. It was wild. It was, it was surreal, <clears throat> but different things like that. I've had, I've been able to, uh, just learn a crud ton. Um, Amazing. but yeah. And then, uh, I don't know, five or so years ago, I decided to start doing my own thing and then started, you know, I taking outside classes, like, uh, took some classes from Frank Proctor, Riley Bowman, Tim Heron, um, uh, Brian, Brian Hill, which I'm AI for, uh, in a few weeks. Um, nice. Okay. Uh, oh my goodness. Ed, Ed Monk. Um, uh -huh. which by the way, if you've never taken an Ed Monk class, I have not go there and show out because his okay. award for top shot is the funniest thing you have ever seen in your <laughs> okay. life. Yeah. Nice. Oh man, I wish I had it handy, but it is, <laughs> it's, it's like uh don't start nothing. Won't be nothing award goes to oh, okay. so-and-so. <laughs> And it's got like Stewie from Family Guy on one side, oh, really? like Clint Eastwood or John Wayne. I can't remember. I don't know the difference. Hell between yeah. The two. Okay. And dude, it is the coolest award I've ever gotten. That's but, awesome. Um, but yeah, anyway, long story short, uh, shorter, it's kind of long. Anyway, here we are today, Perfect. still trying to do my own thing, still taking outside training and just consistently refining um, my craft, if you will, my delivery, my. Um, my opinion, if you will, based on yeah. all my experience of how all this should happen and, and be delivered. It sounds like you have an incredible balance of taking in information as well as teaching it and mm -hmm. wanting to connect with your students. And I can speak to that because you did teach me. Uh, you were an AI for AJ Zito at yep. the Guardian Conference, and you yeah. worked with uh, John, Paul, and I a bit one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. which was so nice because that was my first Red Dot site-specific class ever, and yeah. no one had ever really taught me how to shoot through Red Dot. I just kind of started doing it, you know, mm -hmm. as a lot, as many people do. So it was really nice to be able to experience that, to see you interact with others, to just interact with you as a female in the industry, and just, like feel super respected and just have 
such good, valuable, nourishing conversations with you. And then for you to now come on my podcast, I'm so excited about that. Um, so sure no, not that. too long at all. Thank you. Yeah. And not too long at all. I love when guest speakers give me their full training, um, itinerary, you know what I mean? It's so yeah. impressive when you can talk for that long. Cause that means that you've had that much training. So that's awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, let's see, I'm, ever since my first class with Rodney, I, that was in 2011, um, maybe 2010, wow. but I think it was 2011. So that means I'm 13 years in. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Jeez, I feel yeah. like I could be sh- so I'm still only a class, but I like never okay. get to shoot competitions anyway. Only a class, and uh, so like, man, I've been trying to chase master for a long time. I've been sitting at like eighty four percent. I swear, like two years now, and really? uh, it, it just never lines up to where I can go compete that much. That's I mean, you're so, doing a lot. It's not like you're yeah. you know just kind of chilling after work catching like a five o'clock movie and then going to bed early you're doing a lot we could barely get this episode scheduled so uh, (laughs) yeah it's yeah Yeah. so give your give yourself grace uh i just had matt little on of Mm -hmm. gray beard actual um Mm -hmm. and he talked about how b class is incredible for like civilian training like b class Mm -hmm. is like uh, he talks about that, like being your black belt in training. So, um, if you need to, like, they keep telling me that, but I keep going to bed at night thinking, "Oh man, <laughs> you're just an, you're just an A class nobody." Just an A class, <laughs> nah, man, no, 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 no. If you need to go listen to that episode, check it out. It'll, it's gonna yeah. air before yours. So, hopefully, okay. someone listening, good is, um, You know, hopefully, they're getting what I'm uh, picking up, what I'm putting down here. But yeah. no, I'm so excited. Um, I'd love to hear about your specific teaching philosophy. That's been Mm -hmm. an incredible benefit of this podcast specifically. I didn't actually start She Shield to uh, thinking like I was going to get to learn all these different training philosophies. Um, I was just like wanting to give a platform to these incredible people in the industry that, you know, maybe don't have one yet um, or are growing theirs. And that's been such an... Absolutely. It's been yeah. incredible to hear all of them. So uh, yours in yeah. particular is very interesting. So I'd love for you to share it with the listeners why you chose, first of all, Synergy Training mm-hmm. for Synergy Training Group and what that means to you. Mm. All right. So uh, you asked about the teaching style and where I yeah. came about that. Uh, so I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that I was a math tutor for six years. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. And then I was also a, uh, all of it, like everything from just, uh, tag, which back then was transition algebra, geometry, all the way to calculus. Oh, so nice. <clears throat> yeah. I actually went to college for uh, mechanical engineering. Oh my goodness. So, Very cool. Yeah. 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 Amazing. I was just a big old nerd. That's <laughs> awesome. Then, uh, I'm thinking back to my calculus days and I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, my brain stopped for a second because it doesn't want to go there. But yeah, that's my brain incredible. Is all that's numbers. very impressive. <laughs> Everybody hates on Common Core uh, math, but like it's just a different way of breaking that stuff down in your head and trying yeah. to like taking a problem and realizing there's more than one way to fix it. You know, uh, yeah, like absolutely. It, not everything has to be a specific way. All right. It's right. not, I understand we're writing it in black and white, black pen, black pencil or whatever on white, but. There's a lot of gray area in the middle. If you can figure out how to do that, you can you can almost figure out anything. Um, so I was doing I was doing Common Core stuff in my head, uh, basically nice. pulling apart math e- equations or uh, it doesn't matter, and putting it all back together in my head. I used to get dinged so much by my by my teachers because I didn't show my work. I'm like, but I didn't cheat and I got the answer right. And you know how I didn't cheat because mm-hmm. I was the first person to turn in my assignment. Who did I cheat off right. of? <laughs> Right. That's hilarious. So, uh, yeah. Uh, also, I blame my mom for the sarcasm. Uh, okay. Like okay. This as well. <laughs> it sounds like you've gotten a, some really awesome attributes from her, but that's, yeah. Oh, man. That's very cool. Yeah. Dude, me and my mom glued at, glued at the hips. Uh, that Just is the for fact sure. that you competed together as like your uh, form of absolutely. coping and connecting. Oh, she that, got, just, she got yeah. so good so fast. Like nice. she just went off and left me. She knew she was Love our it. state's <laughs> first world arm woman uh, instructor. Oh, nice. uh, That's incredible. She, yeah. She went from nobody to a uh, chief range officer in like a year and a half and was working national matches. Wow. Um, that was actually where That's I, incredible. So 
2011 uh, at the Multigun Nationals in Vegas. Uh, Mom uh, brought me with her to work the match uh, just as a peon run, go get this thing, because I didn't know nothing. And um, that's where I got to make, meet Jerry Mitchell like, the first time. And Very then Max nice. Michelle and a couple other like big names from back then. <clears throat> that was back when Shane Coley was part of the uh, ASMU uh, unit. Okay. Um, you know Shane Coley, the Glock guy? Yes, actually. His yep. name, yes. He's Is, actually, believe he... it or not, no, he's go ahead, from sorry. like uh, like 30 minutes north of where I grew up, too. So we're both, oh, missing, nice. we're both Delta boys. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, But so <clears throat> that's that's where I started teaching at the age of 14 as a math tutor. And then also did nice. a little bit of saxophone tutoring as well. Um, Very cool. Also okay. A band nerd. Yep. Did all nice. the bands, concert, marching and jazz. Um, jazz was my favorite. Uh, I played three different saxophones. I was the swing player. So whatever, um, whatever that the band needed me to play, I, I could play that. Um, so Can I anyway, just say something. Yeah. You have a band personality, and I really? can say that as a violinist <laughs> um, who taught sectionals and orchestra. And, oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. So it's, it's of course, you know the, um, you know, like the almost like fake funny feud between like orchestra and band, like who's door gear, all that stuff. Oh, I and then so choir. Many, <laughs> yes, that too, that too. Oh my God. Um I had so many friends, like I dated a few people in band. That sounds really bad. You, different times, don't worry. Um, but like there's a certain personality, you, <laughs> you know what I mean? To like band people, because you have yeah. to have this like ability to connect with those around you, you not yeah. only have to listen to the section that's across the stage from you, but you also have to be yeah. able to connect with people and like meet them where they're at. Like it really does say a lot about you that you were mm -hmm. a musical instructor from a past musical yeah. tutor as well. Like that truly says a lot. So I just wanted to say that it's kind of yeah. funny. as much as yeah. a teenage uh, person that had no training in how to teach people could do. Like I was just trying to help, help, Still. help the, the guys that weren't, they just weren't getting it. So we'd spend a little bit of time after class or whatever, uh, trying oh, to help awesome. them a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was by no Very means cool. like the guy to go see if you wanted to be <clears throat> the next best saxophone player. Um, I gotcha. was just helping out the, like the lowest common denominator type of thing. But yeah, um, well, that's yeah. awesome. So just helping people and, and, and relating to them, like, look, man, life's hard, right? Yeah. Like, this skill we're trying to do ain't, it ain't easy. All right. A right. lot of times it's yeah. simple, but it ain't right. easy. Um, right. And like sometimes when I, when I do things so fast, it can be intimidating. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm just, a, I'm a naturally very efficient person that does everything really fast. And then nice. So I can, I can exemplify the skill, but then mm -hmm. I have to word it in such a way that it's no longer mm -hmm. intimidating. I have to meet them where they are. Be like, look, man, I remember the day where I like, I was doing good to reload the gun. I remember that day. All right. It's yeah. Don't please don't feel bad. All right. Right. Yeah. Let's find some happy medium. I, I, you know, the more conversation I have with them, the more they open up, the more I can, I can see how they communicate so that I can cater mm -hmm. how I'm communicating with them. So that has the best effect. And, um, anyway, and also not everybody needs everything all at once. Like a lot of instructors are like doing this whole, uh, Everything here's everything at once, and yeah, I, I used to do that because I didn't know any better. But I've grown and I've learned, and I'm, I've I've slowly but surely started understanding how to read people and give them the maximum amount of stuff that can be beneficial beneficial to them without overloading them. Because um, we can get overloaded. Like yeah. I uh, I do plumbing as my daily job. And my boss to plumbing is like me to gun stuff. When he walks ah. up and starts, goes to a job and starts doing things, I'm like, dude, I can barely keep up. What are you like? And then I'll go and do something or, you know, one of our other workers are going and doing something. And he's like, why is it taking all so long? I'm like, bro, because we're, we're trying to figure this out as we do it. Like, if right. we ain't got all this figured out and done a hundred times like you have. Right. So it's really cool to be in the student seat and have that perspective of at times being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And, um, but he's, God, he's such a great boss and he teaches oh, awesome. so well. And we, we really thrive off of each other, um, on, on that type of thing. But anyway, the, uh, so that's how I got my teaching start. 
and we went all sorts of like we found like no. eight rabbit holes, but only went like a few inches in each one. <laughs> no, I appreciate you going into your background outside of just firearms, talking about your yeah. math tutoring, your saxophone tutoring, and then the fact that your day to day job even brings a perspective and lesson for you. And um, I wish more people would go into that on this on this <clears throat> podcast. So I appreciate you sharing yeah. that. And um, I think it shows how reflective you are as well about like how you have ended up where you're at now. So mm -hmm. that's really exciting. And um, we've talked a little bit about your approach to teaching people one-on-one -on -one and really connecting with them where they're at. So where does that come from and how do you currently implement that in your synergy training? So that comes from all the tutoring that I've done. Um, right. So I'm a very uh, hyper person that is also kind of has the heart of a gypsy. Like I, I really, nice. like I, I always go, want to go somewhere. To, like I, I, I pick up something, I became, I become fairly dang good at it really quick and then get bored of it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go find something else to do. Well, that's a nice that thing. Is, I've never heard that. <laughs> that's why I've never had a profession that's lasted longer than like two years. So I've had nice. so many jobs, uh -huh. like um, two jobs ago, believe it or not, I was a branch manager for Regions Bank. I was, okay. in, I was in, yeah, I was in financial yeah. management. And Very so, nice. <clears throat> and anyway, it's, uh, I say, I'll say this, um, I've also had some professional training that really helps out here. Regions is the largest bank in the Southeast and, uh, their training resources are, are vast, right? So I, I got yeah. to learn a lot about how to, um, teach people in things that aren't gun related, you know, cause it's a bank. We're just, we're doing right. banking stuff, but it's all about building relationships with the, your customers, right? Cause banking is sales. It's basically sales. It's sales with a pretty little bow on top. That's all it is. Okay. And so being able to connect with customers, listen to what they're saying, ask uh, prompting questions so that they also uh, say more information that they, they thought they were going to say to be able to really put them in the proper product that fits them, not necessarily what they thought they were going to get when they came in. Um, that was very eye opening. And then I got into management. So I had to teach all of my employees that skill as well. Um, believe it or not. So one of the coolest things that they did was the, um, Oh, Clifton strength finders, uh, thing. So it's like a personality test is forever long. It's like an hour and a half test. If you zoom through it, Okay. And so my top five traits were communication, responsibility, analytical, uh, belief, and respect, I think it was. Nice. So and so there's different categories of, of type of person that that puts you under. And the category that I got put under is coach. Um, so Very my nice. my specific personality traits, my natural God-given traits, um, okay. puts me under the category of a coach. So – that going through that back in 2019, really, that was the beginning of refining who I am. I had a really good boss uh, when I was a assistant manager before I went to management, um, Mr. Kevin, oh Kevin Brown, and he said to me one day, I, I did something really good, and I was super excited about it. And he told me congratulations, and I was like, man, just trying to be like you, KB. And he stopped me, and he looked at me, and like looked into my heart. I swear, mm -hmm. I'll never forget this. He's like, this world don't need another me. This world needs the best version of you. Just be you, yeah. dude. That's and awesome. uh, I'll, That's man, I'll never forget that. Aww, and it's yeah. weird because like the next training thing, one of the next training things I did was the active self-protection instructor curriculum thing. And that just hammered it in. That hammered that mm -hmm. home and helped me refine, get done refined, not done. It was never done, but like, Get me to a solid place of being the best version of myself that I can be. Because I like I wasted I don't know how many years. I, I feel like it was kind of a trauma response, but I wasted so many years trying to be the person that I thought other people wanted me to be, or be the person that I thought would get me further in life or whatever. Like I just I never was okay with just being me, and um, going th KB saying that to me and then going through the active protection sort of curriculum program. I can finally breathe yeah. and I, I feel like I've the connections that I can make with people now from that, because I'm not trying to worry about what, trying to be the person they want me to be. 
so yeah. much more genuine, so, so much, uh, so much, so much deeper of a connection than I, than ever before. And of course it's going to keep getting better, but I just got to give a tip of the hat to all of that. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. And yeah. I, I, yeah, that is a compliment when you are like trying to tell someone you respect, you know, you're incredible. Thank you. And then they throw that back at you. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's an, so, and he's he's okay. smart. He's he's wise. Like he he knew I needed to hear that too. Yeah, and he said yeah. It, he said it in the exact way and the exact timing where it had the best impact. Like and that awesome. that's that's wisdom only age can give you. I, I'll be honest with you. Like I I don't know if I have that effect on people um, yet. I probably don't. But like that's that is some old man wisdom. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. There there are some things that. Yes, that I think come with age as well. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And when it comes to your structuring of your classes, first of all, do you what classes do you offer or is it just mm-hmm. one-on-one currently? Oh no, so I have I have a couple of different things. Okay. Um and that's where synergy came from was my belief that all things are important. Like when I shoot, I sh- I, I I got that from Rodney May. He he uh, he coined core shooting, which is the upper okay. body structure behind the gun that involves proper engagement with major muscle groups, core muscle groups. So yes. that this this is something that he's been teaching for since two thousand and no 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 since nineteen ninety nine when okay. he started at Mid South. Um, so anyway, so I did that, and then you know just my own philosophies of how we should be taking into account everything, our environment. The people are uh, like, and when I say the environment, I'm talking like the wind blowing and how in tune we are with nature um, the, and the being in tune with people around us, understanding what they're saying, even when they're not saying anything at all, uh, mm-hmm. like understanding what needs to be shot, and what doesn't, understanding right. yourself and what you can and can't do. All right. Not trying to yeah. push your capabilities beyond what you uh, actually can and being more of a uh, liability to yourself and those around you. Um, so on and so forth. So my buddy, Wes, Wesley Sutterfield, he's our, uh, he's our stop the bleed trauma first aid instructor, um, OG paramedic in, from Jackson. That's plugged more knife and bullet holes than you can count. Uh, yeah. He came up with the name Synergy. And back then I was only teaching the shooty stuff. So it was Synergy Shooting Solutions. And um, beginning of last year, I reformatted the name because one, uh, social media doesn't like anything with the word shoot in it. Uh, And two, I do way more than shooting stuff now. I'm starting to teach Mm -hmm. less lethal self-defense classes, uh, just uh, four-hour seminars for uh, small groups or female-only groups for introduction to self-awareness and self-defense with OC spray, things of that nature, doing speaking engagements. Um, So more of a training group type of thing. Plus, I have um, some guys I'm trying to bring in and uh, a – apprentice type of stuff as well. So it's more of a group effort and not just me. I never wanted it to be just me anyway, but, um, right. But yeah, so that's where that came from. And, uh, to answer your question on the classes I do. Um, so I used to just do anything. I was very much the, let's throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Cause I, again, yeah. I didn't know who I was and I wasn't okay right. with it. I was like, Oh my God, I don't know where I'm at. I just need to figure <laughs> out what sticks right and now. stick with that. Maybe in my, yeah. Yeah. Totally so, um, I've really refined it a lot lately. And nice. so, okay. um, as I told you earlier, my wife owns Whole Story Health. She's a uh, uh-huh. she has a very holistic approach to health, and 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 so do I. We have the, the, almost the exact same or the same ideologies on uh, the approach. And so you know what uh, functional medicine is? Yes. The term functional. All right. So <clears throat> my flagship pistol course is called Functional Pistol. Okay. It's what I consider to be a holistic approach to pistol shooting. What are the core fundamental concepts and principles that you need to understand, learn, and be able to practice and know how to practice it. And of course, track all of this to be a proficient pistol shooter. And then uh, I will slowly build the same thing for rifle. I don't know if you know this, but you know, when, I, when I teach at Guardian this year, I'll be teaching two rifle classes. So I'll no, be the, actually, the rifle guy. we talked yep. a bit before, but yeah, I mm-hmm. meant to ask you like what you were teaching this year. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. So I'll okay. do uh, I'll do rifle stuff. Um, one is optimizing nice. your rifle, optimizing your carbine. Because of all these regular civilians I've seen bring carbines to class, I look at their rifle. I'm like, you have no idea what 
half the stuff is, do you? Because like half of it's not even yeah. installed correctly. <laughs> yeah. Like now we got to spend an hour of class fixing your rifle. <laughs> so yeah, <That's laughs> and it's totally not because fair. it's not because that they just they're malicious or anything. They just don't know. Right. They've never been told. So Absolutely. I'm going to do a uh, four hour optimizing your carbine class, and then uh, just a um, a little snippet of what I would consider functional rifle. Some basic okay. principles and, and concepts that you need to understand to be good behind a rifle. Uh, connection nice. site picture, knowing uh, your ballistics, um, understanding which zero produces which uh, uh, b- ballistics graph, if you will, so yeah. on and so forth. There's things you really need to be uh, really need to know to be a good rifleman. Um, but so, all right. So, functional pistol is my flagship two day course. Okay. All right, and then um, I teach with a gentleman called named Jim Krantz. He's a uh, grandmaster okay. pistol shooter um, in Ipsic and uh, USPSA. So he 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 competes on a on a global level. Um, so, and he nerds out about that type of stuff. Like that is nice. that is yeah. he lives and breathes competitive practical shooting. Love that. So we have a practical shooting clinic that we teach together, and then hey. um, my. One of my best friends in the world, Stony Steel. That's his God given name, Stony Steel. Uh, Cause you know, it's the best guy. He's a grandmaster yeah. in USPSA and he, te- he helps. Uh, he actually, me and him did the Red Dot Pistol Performance class as a one dayer at my home range uh, a couple okay. of years ago. Kept doing it. It was very successful. And that's where Functional Pistol actually came from. Uh, oh, nice. Functional Pistol okay. was the evolution of that one day RDS class. And he still helps helps me teach it whenever he's home. He works offshores half the year. So um gotcha. there's that. And then uh you know, just uh one on one stuff, virtual coaching and um uh, enhanced carry classes for the state. I do that on occasion. Got one this weekend actually. But the coolest thing that I think I'm doing now that I don't know if anyone else is doing is what I call synergy remote. And okay. what it is, it's a six-week hybrid training class. It's a six-week hybrid one-on-one training class. So you get signed up uh, for less than the cost of a two-day class. All right, just the just the cost of going to one, not including your hotel, travel, food, and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get me one-on-one for six weeks. Our first Very meeting cool. Is just understanding who you are and where are you at where are you at on your shooting journey, your goals, making sure those goals are refined properly, making sure we're looking at goals as milestones and not destinations, mm-hmm. um, seeing where you're at on your mental management game, looking at all your different experiences, um, reviewing some footage of you shooting and dry firing. And then you're going to get two weeks of assignments. All right. I'm going to structure your dry fire based on what I think you need right now. Um, so your priority is this, uh, and then you're also going to have a live fire, uh, assignment that, and of course you got to record at least two sessions of your dry fire. And then you got to record your live fire as well. We meet up again, zoom, uh, and we review all that stuff. Of course you can, you, the the student texts me and whatnot during those two weeks. It's not like you don't hear from me within those two weeks or whatever. Right. Like, no, like you're still texting me, asking me questions. We're checking in yeah. making sure, making sure things are groovy and all that. And so two weeks hit up another zoom, same thing. All right. We review where you're at. Uh, we give you an, another priority of what to work on, making sure that dry fire is being structured properly. Um, and your live fire, your next live fire assignment is going to be such and such again, same thing. Okay. Then another two weeks. And then we have your exit, uh, meeting. So an entry meeting, uh, every two weeks, uh, a checkup with more assignments and then your exit meeting. Um, and of course at the exit meeting, you have the option to continue the program or take your toys and go home, whatever. And so, okay. <laughs> um, so nice. yeah, I don't, but it's a minimum of six weeks. All right, because yeah, there is no way our human brains can absorb everything an instructor is trying to teach us in a in a two day curriculum in sixteen hours. Mm-hmm. There's no way. All right, not Absolutely. only that, but there's no way that we can produce measurable skill improvements in two days. Little bit if you do everything right. And you can somehow have an aggregate of results and take away 
the uh, outliers, okay? But that becomes right. super time-intensive. And in a world where these two-day classes have become more of just hanging out with your favorite Insta star, uh, more so than it is That's actually fair. learning anything. It's like, oh, hey, come shoot these standards and spend however much time we got to waste while one person does this thing that I think that you must do to say, oh, I've arrived and I get this thing because of it. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yep. I, like I'm going to be, you know, twiddling my thumbs for an two hours while other people are doing this thing to see if they've arrived and they had to pay all right. this money and waste all this time just to come see if they did or didn't. And I'm like, what are we learning here? What, like, what's the end goal? Are, are we scratching egos or are we actually learning? Uh, I'm confused because right. it sure doesn't sound like we're learning. It really just seems like everybody's getting their ego scratched and uh, not just the instructor, but the student too. And I couldn't give you two, could not give two craps about anybody's ego, much less my own. Like I really want to get out what I'm putting in. If I'm going to put in, of course. Uh, let's say, uh, minimum 48 hours away from my family, away from my wife, thousand dollars of my resources, lost wages, whatever else. And then I come home and I'm like, yeah, I had a good time. Well, that's cool and all, but like, right. What else? Oh, just, I had a good time. I got to shoot some. I feel like I you know, got, I knocked the rust off, you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, what are you going to do now? How are you, are you going to take what you just learned and you're going to go to the range and you're going to practice this and keep it going? Oh no! I'll catch another class next time. Oh, the same class, so you can you can hammer in with no, it's it's a, a different one. So you're not going to absorb, practice, and refine what you just learned. Instead, right. you're just going to go have a good time and then pick your next favorite flavor of Insta Star teacher and go take their thing and just somehow hope all this sticks. And just one day you wake up as a ninja with a gun. I'm like, what? Right. This this does not make sense. This is not how humans learn. Like, if that was the case, then you you would have a high school diploma by the time you were eight. But no, that's not. That's fair. Everybody yeah, would have absolutely. a PhD by the time they were 16. But no. Yeah. This, uh, anyway, so Synergy Remote <laughs> is a six-week-long program, uh, minimum six weeks. You, you have the option to extend it, of course, where okay. you actually get your money's worth. And, like, you... You're taught like how to train and how to practice, and uh, anyway, and of course, I have the the all the fun two day stuff. If you just want to have a good time and learn some really cool stuff, and uh, understand that I don't have standards, I have functional exercises that are meant for okay. you to take home so that you can track and see what you're doing. It's also gonna, it's also um, manipulative. Ma ma you can manipulate it, whatever the word mm -hmm. is, I'm looking for that. You can manipulate okay. it to your certain skill level. You can pick and pick apart which thing yeah. you want to uh, work on, specifically isolate different skills. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I have synergy functional exercises. I don't have standards. I don't have this subjective goal that you must meet to win some thing uh, right. that says, oh, I've arrived. I don't have to do it anymore because I've arrived. No, that's, uh, no, no, no. I have right. these exercises that have a limitless score. Like there is no top score. It's, it's hit factor scoring. That. It it can always be approved by either going faster or getting more points uh, or getting more yeah. points while going faster. Like, so it's, yeah, uh, that was a lot. That's awesome. No, it's good. <laughs> it's a good a lot. And, um, I, I'm trying to think the first time that an instructor ever really emphasized like post class, post-class assignments was mm -hmm. when I trained with Keith Tyler of TFI Academy and he gave me oh yeah some oh do you know him yeah yeah so me and Raleigh taught at his place uh last year in yes. June I believe yeah yes. Raleigh taught Funny his story. uh pistol IQ I and went. uh yeah yeah I was his AI that weekend I, we spent the whole weekend hanging out with Keith and uh uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it was a great yes. time Keith's awesome beautiful dude. land absolutely yeah. Keith Keith is a character I love him and uh, he character in a good way. I'm sorry. That sounds bad. Oh, but, no. oh he's um, definitely a character. He's, he's, he's a definitely guy. a character. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah. So after, after training with him a few times, I, um, I took his workbook home. He gives everyone a binder, yeah. um, and it really summarizes everything he, he teaches. And then, um, he also started giving me some homework and he allows students mm -hmm. to pay him for like 
some homework check-ins for dry fire. And that was yep. awesome because I was like, what the hell is dry fire? Like what even is dry fire other than, you know, just drawing from the holster? What do I need to work on? And that was the first time I was like, nice. Nice. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have, so, have you done his shooter athlete program yet? Well, oh, I guess okay, you live so, too far away to do that. Well, when I lived in total transparency, when I lived in Jonesboro, I had mm-hmm. the option of doing that, but I was finishing up a master's program and it was four mm-hmm. hours for me. So it Soul was flex. It was a big mm. I don't know. It was a big <laughs> commitment. It was definitely man, it was training going out there and training was amazing for so many reasons. First of all, I was always indoors teaching um as a GA was teaching first aid on campus as a GA. And then I was also a master's student. And then I was a personal trainer, just like always inside. And so it got me to go outside and be in the elements with the insects. Oh my God. And um, after that, he would give me homework. So I'd drive there in the morning, like leave at like 5 a.m., get home at like 10. And then he'd give me homework and then I'd go and see him again in like a month. But the shooter Mm -hmm. athlete program, it was a little bit intense for the time I had. Mm -hmm. Um, and just full transparency finances at the time because I was sure, a student, yeah. so yeah. paying off med school. So um, <clears throat> it was it was a great introduction to what a quality program entails, and it's what I look for now when I train with people. I've never heard of your approach, which sounds which sounds a lot like a personal trainer approach, where you mm-hmm. like you actually check in and you look at data and you yep. assess and then you reassign. Mm -hmm. So I really love that. Like that's music to my ears as a personal trainer, as someone who has a personal trainer um, and has taken many classes so far, like really love what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Full transparency. I kind of stole it from my wife. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a little shorter. Her program's longer for the women that she brings on because you know, she's a, she's a health coach specializing Uh uh in uh, female metabolic and hormonal health. And so like, very nice. That's basically her business plan. Okay. Like, this makes all the sense. And then, of course, I had just done the hybrid training uh, with um, ASPSC, the instructor okay. curriculum. Um, and so it was a meeting every every Tuesday evening with homework, writing assignments. Mm-hmm. And we had one live fire meetup in Sioux Falls, South Carolina. I'm sorry, okay. Sioux Falls, North South Dakota. Lord have mercy, tongue tied. And uh, <laughs> I was like, and it was six months long. I'm like, okay, this is effective. Mm-hmm. Like the most growth in six months I think I've ever experienced was that. I'm like, why can't nice? Why aren't we doing that for shooters? Like just for uh-huh. like what? This is super effective. Yeah. Like uh. I, so anyway, um, That's between awesome. the ASPIC and the way my wife does business with her uh, clients, um, I was like, oh, there's a need and it ain't being met. I'm gonna do it right. I have the resources. I have the time. I have the ability. I'm I'm doing. If not me, then who? Right? <laughs> like we said that Absolutely. earlier. And then bridging yeah. the gap. We said that earlier as well. I feel like I really do feel like there's a, there's a gap there um, yeah. that needed needed to be bridged. You know, people. There's people taking these classes that wish they would have gotten more out of it. Mm-hmm. They feel like they got two hours of instruction uh, instruction out of a two day class. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. You spent a thousand dollars and only got that. Like. There's got to be a better way. Well, there is. Yeah, there is. Uh, and I, my approach to functional pistol is uh, I feel a more efficient um, way of teaching a two day class as well, where you're just getting way more one on one time and, and, and coaching and learning out of a two day class than, than your traditional two day show up, do as I say uh, type of thing, run this drill, whatever. Um, so, yeah. And it's not also, uh, it, and it's not much, but whenever you do sign up for the Synergy remote program, you do get like this whole packet that I, I mail you. Um, you get dry fire awesome. targets that are front and back, USPSA or classics, whichever you prefer. I like both, um, which my Synergy uh, targets have a, have both overlaid on top of each other. And you'll, you'll learn okay. actually that. Yeah, good show. Uh, that right there. Awesome. Is classic is a more atomically correct anatomically correct um thoracic shootable zone than the big old ginormous uh nine by 12 a zone of a, a uspsa target really anyway, okay s- stickers as normal one of the best things you can do <laughs> shooting journal all right yep. and i'm gonna and and 
also in here is instructions on how to make your logs, like how to, how to journal. Okay. Right? It's not just talking about your feelings. Like we're really. Right. Oh, darn. Yep. Exactly. We are, <laughs> we are absolutely catering to what our conscious, subconscious and self image need. All right. We're protecting Very that nice. self image. We're burning into our subconscious mind. What our new norm is like, you know what? I just set my per personal record for a, a, a 190 bill drill all clean from concealment today. I'd love to continue to relive that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Relive uh -huh. it, write it down. Go back right. and read it. You can relive it. Yes. Your your subconscious mind doesn't understand the uh, the difference between the reality your conscious mind feeds it or the uh, the reality that it, it that it that we make up. So like if actual one Absolutely. or the one we relive here, it's pretty much all the same. Yes. We're burning it in. Absolutely, the reticular activating system. Right. Fancy words. I. I yes. You're going to have to email me that because I, I need that. <laughs> gotcha. I didn't know if that was where you were heading. I was going to see if I could catch you there. Um, it's <coughs> like the system that yep. our brain uses to filter information. And mm -hmm. like it technically doesn't know what's real and what's fake. So whatever we tell exactly. ourselves is what perpetuates, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and and, and what the worst thing is, negative self-talk is the worst snowballing thing is because then we're going to start believing exactly. all those negative thoughts that we've had. And again, yeah. I'm not saying any of this on my little mountain of perfectionism. OK, right, I'm saying course. this from a dude that is on that same exact journey. All right. Like mm -hmm. I've I've been through therapy. I've been through all those negative self-talks like I, I've. I've been to the deepest of the deep and like I've come out of it and I've gotten like, I, I want to share with people exactly that. All right. Um, cause Absolutely. Like, I'm in, I'm invested in their journey, not just where they end up, but like the whole journey. Um, yeah. and of course you also get some locked in grip, uh, grip chalk cause nice. that's cool. It's pretty handy dandy. It um, is. I, and a barrel block. Got to have a barrel block Very for cool. safe dry fire. So you have a cool onboarding package that sets you up for success. And then, of that's course, there's a nice. piece of printer paper that's printed out that's got, like, additional resources, like, use this website for such and such. This is how you journal your your uh, things and um, so on and so forth. So it's not just a, hey, pay me money and <clears throat> I'll see you three times, four times, whatever, and happy yeah. day. Like, no, you actually have tangible stuff to take home as well and actually work on. Um, like Keith, Keith was saying, you, you're going to have mm -hmm. homework and you're going to have to record it. You're going to have to write it down. All yes, that stuff. Yeah. I'll do it with that later. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's that's super exciting. And it's it's nice to know that people have options out there. It's a it's definitely a more invasive is not the right word. Invasive is not the right word. I'm thinking of like. I'm thinking of medical terminology now. I'm like in the medical mindset. Um, it is a it, more in-depth approach. So if you're someone who wants to go to the class and just like mm -hmm. experience that social aspect, meet someone that you really look up yeah. to and just have fun, yeah. that's cool. You can do that. But for yep. someone who wants a more involved uh, instructor to work with, you are giving them that option. So that's Absolutely. super exciting. Um, and yeah. I'll have all of your training information linked in the show notes for anyone interested Perfect. in that. Um, yeah. kind of going off of the mental management system you use, mm -hmm. uh, I'd love to hear about that because everyone's is a little different and it's mm -hmm. incredibly encouraging. And I don't think it's talked about enough as someone who's really only shot like eight USPSA matches at this point, <laughs> it's easy to see even by eight, I can see people's man mental management systems at work. Like you have the yeah. person who's like, ah, that, that was bad, but I'll be okay. And then they crush it on the next stage. And then you have the guy who's like kicking the dirt next to you. And you're like, oh my God, like <laughs> chill dude. Even though, you know, some people take it seriously, but then he mm -hmm. like messes up the rest of the day. Cause he's just so in his head. So oh, yeah. I'd love to know for you, like what, what is your system? Well, first off again, um, I come from, the experience of being all of those people. All right. Again, I don't right. want to sound like I'm on this mountain of perfectionism looking down on people. Like, no, man, like I've lived it. I'm still living it. I still struggle with things. All right. Like I, I'm human. Right. <laughs> right. I Absolutely. talk really fast, but I promise I'm human. <laughs> right. So my first introduction to mental management was actually with Riley Bowman back in 2021, two. Okay. 22. I think I can't remember. All right. So, and he said something along the lines of, uh, there is do or do not, there is no try. 
which is a uh it's a uh, oh god who's the little small weird thing in star yoda? wars the green thank you yoda i was about <laughs> to say yogi i was like that's not right <laughs> <laughs> Yoda says that in Star know. Wars. Oh man, I'm terrible with movies. I don't like I I, no. uh, I can't sit still long enough to watch movies most of the time. So anyway, Thank um you. and I didn't quite understand it, but I remember it. Okay. Then <clears throat> I do the active sub protection instructor curriculum. Uh oh man, it's been two years now. So 2022, us we start in May. So, right. yeah, I met Raleigh Bowman in February of 2022, and then I started in May, the same year with the ASPSC Cohort 5. And one of the reading assignments was, um, I gave it away. I passed it on, which is uh, With Winning in Mind by uh, mm-hmm. Lanny Basham. So, uh, if, if you, for folks listening that may not know, Lanny Basham coined the Mental Management Systems. And you can Google that up, man. They got he's got a little workbook on there that teaches you uh, like actual things you can do. And then of course you can always buy his book with winning in mind. And in the back of it, it has that work work list as well. Because I like actual yes. things. Like I, I can't. I'm not the person that I'm can just absorb you. information and immediately apply. It. Like I need to do it to make sure it's right. truly burned in. And so I read the book <clears throat> and started applying it. I haven't quite perfected defining who I am because it's changing all the time. And then my, my best friend, uh, Mikos, I call him Memphis, Memphis Beach. Uh, I asked him who he was at my last functional pistol class up in North, ba- North Alabama. And he says, I'm a trophy husband. And I just threw my hands up and I was like, dang, nabbit, now I got to change mine. Mine's got to have trophy husband in it now. Yep. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I thought that was the coolest thing, man. That is awesome. And um, so anyway, uh, yeah, the middle management stuff is, it's mandatory. There's no two yeah. ways about it. If, yep. if you don't know what middle management is or never actually tried applying it and you have hit some sort of plateau or ceiling, I promise you right now, I will bet every dollar in my bank account, this will get you over it. Learning how to cater how cater to how your conscious mind, your subconscious mind, and your self-image all work together to give you the performance you desire and and really start, like I said, catering to how all that works will get you over that plateau. Bar none, Absolutely. easiest thing you can do, go do that, all right? If yeah. you want to do it with me, cool beans. I ain't a mental management coach. I just sprinkle it in to make sure that you are at least exposed to it and get Absolutely. you going in the direction of Lanny Basham or Chris Bean. Chris Bean is a certified mental management coach. Um, okay. Huge mentor of mine. I don't know if you know who that is. I don't but, actually. I'll ah, take a note though. That's someone else I need to get him. you in contact with. Please. Yep. Yep. Huge coach. He's uh, he's one of the coder. Uh, B E A N, Chris Bean. Chris okay. Bean. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought you said. Okay, cool, cool. He's one of the co directors of the uh, ASPIC, uh, Active Sub Protection Instructor Curriculum. Um, okay. Great dude. So knowledgeable. Like, sometimes when I talk to him, I'm like, I thought I was smart. Well, you're making me second guess this some days. <laughs> but hilarious. no, in a good way, because he really cares about you, you know? Right, and, a good um, challenge. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, uh, no, the mental management thing is something you have to, you absolutely have to integrate into your training. And not, not this, uh, this ain't just shooting, right? Like, right. this mental management stuff has helped me be a better human, helped me be a, a better husband, a better employee, a better coach, a better uh, uh, a friend. Like, all the things because I'm not drowning right. in my negative thoughts that I used to. Like my negative thoughts used to absolutely control me. And now they don't. Now they don't. It's just like I'll have them and then I have a way of dealing with them and then we're all good. Like an hour or two at the most is when I have to deal with these types of things. And sometimes I can right. deal with them in just a matter of a few minutes. And I tell you what, I, I used to be the, the most impatient person ever. And uh, I can attribute my newfound level of patience to that as well. Like yeah. just truly understanding how all this works, how to manage my thoughts, expectations. Um, oh, preconceived expectations. That was the the thing I was trying to think of earlier. Okay. 
it's a miracle I can be a coach to anybody with this freaking <laughs> rabbit running around in my head, to be honest with you. No, not true. Also, it's late. <laughs> like, for those listening don't know, it's 8 p.m. Central. And, yeah. like, to, like, work all day and then hop on a podcast, that's yep. that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's so, a lot. Give yourself uh, grace. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, the, the middle manager thing has got to happen. Plain and simple. Yeah. Go, go get the With Winning in Mind book read it. And if you want more, uh, reach out to someone like me or Chris Bean, and we can get you going in that direction. I love that. And I like that you sprinkle it in. It's maybe not your exact focus, but you get people to think about it. Um, I was luckily given that book by um, a friend early on in the industry. And um, if he hadn't given that to me, I would have never considered it. And I read it between my like first and second USPSA match that I did. And Applying that just in that short time made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And it's applied to my everyday life. It's applied to myself as a wife, as a friend, as a sister, as a daughter. Um, Just that mentality of not being perfect and Mm -hmm. like taking the time to appreciate the experience and also like using our, using our um, kind of like, just neurological pathways that are built into our advantage, taking the time to get psychoeducated and then actually be able to use that Mm -hmm. to our advantage. Like so, so incredible. Um, It's funny. I I should start tallying because that book has been recommended so So many many times times on this podcast. Yes. But I didn't know that we actually had an industry uh, mental management uh, coach. So I'm excited that I can link him and, Put yeah. his name out there for people two. that want some more one-on-one. You actually have two. Steve Anderson's the other one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I have his books. Okay, mm-hmm. let me yeah, write that down. Yeah, so uh, Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I got it right. There-ish, somewhere in the stuff. Yeah. Notice I <sighs> said I have his books. I have yet to read them. Um, oh really? I hate to be that way, but his name comes up a lot. Yes, and yep. that's just me being an audible fiend. And yeah, took a Steve Anderson class last February. And okay. I won, <laughs> I won a few of the speed challenges, most of them, and then most of the accuracy challenges. And, oh my gosh! Nice. Yeah. Okay. And it was that was one of my aha moments of I have everything there is. Like I, there's nothing different between me and a GM shooter as far as my pure shooting ability. And yeah. I'd been beating myself up over that for a long time, and going up and, and putting up those numbers and beating J J Bill's uh, record for a one R one in front of Steve Anderson nice. was like, it, it was that affirmation that I'd never had before that again, mm-hmm. that negative self thought, a uh, negative talk that had, yep. had just taken control over me. I was like, Oh man, I can finally breathe. It finally made me okay with the fact that I'm not a GM, not because of lacking shooting skill, but just the lack of time in the sport. Like I just, I, yeah. I don't have, like I get to shoot like three matches a year. Who's going to be a GM shooting three matches a year? Come on. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, Not me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, like it just, it is what it is. And I, I finally right. uh, was able to be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's incredible. And thank you for sharing that. I feel like at anyone listening can benefit from hearing your story. And um, it really comes down a lot to, excuse me, I've been talking a lot today. Um, it comes down a lot to also like what your goals are in the industry and like identifying mm-hmm. your goals and your priorities, which I, that was an awesome, I had Matt Little on, um, I think I mentioned earlier, and that was like one of the big topics of that podcast episode. And it's really gotten me thinking about like, what are my goals and priorities right now? Yeah. Um, cause it's so easy to like look around and compare yourself to, um, mm-hmm. this industry is huge, but it's also small very small and it's easy to just play the comparison game all the time so um it is no it's really awesome it's i like that we have instructors like you that combine the uh, physical well-being mental well-being um and also like the actual skill and technical side of things into one that's really it's all relevant again absolutely like uh, yeah the sum uh of all is important (laughs) <laughs> yes 100 percent. and sorry go ahead no you're uh, it was fine i was gonna the, i had a so i had a revelation the other day okay and i shared this with my wife 
And because I've always been this, like I said earlier, this hyper gypsy person that's never okay with where I'm at. So I'm always bouncing around. I have struggle with enjoying living in the moment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm always rushing myself. So that's where my performance uh, really suffers because I've always got myself in a mm -hmm. rush. My absolute best knockout performances I've ever done was cold, not caring. I'm like, ah. Let's just see what I got, man. Just do the thing yeah. and like, boom, I like nail it. I'm like, what? I wasn't even nice. trying. And, uh, and, and Raleigh was like, yeah, because there is no try. It's just do. I'm like, okay, Raleigh. Mm -hmm. All right. I heard you there 30 <laughs> times. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know, there's two places, there's, there's two times and places that I fully live in the moment, I have a smile from ear to ear. And there's no place I'd rather be like, I'm, I'm just, I'm in the moment. I'm loving life. And that's honestly at church, worshiping God with my wife. Mm. All right. That's where I'm getting refilled and, and revitalized, re-energized. And then on the range teaching, mm. not my own performance, not my own practice. Cause I just, I've like, I have, I do it because I need to. Right. But I don't find that much enjoyment in it. More, yeah. My living in the moment and my enjoyment is being in front of students and helping them really actually learn, have those aha moments, see yeah. their measurable gains. And then, you know, weeks afterwards, still talking to me like, man, this, I'm doing my homework. This is working. Like I, I'm setting PRs uh, every mm -hmm. week now and things like that. Like, so I, I need to, uh, you you were saying understanding your purpose in life, all right, where you're meant mm -hmm. to be. Um, that's me. Honoring and worshiping God, uh, especially with my wife, and then pouring that back into my students. So I, I, I've on. just uh, – I'm glad to have finally made that realization that uh, that aha for my own self, like truly understanding who yeah. I'm meant to be in life and, and my yeah. true calling. Absolutely, yeah. And that was beautifully said. It sounds like you've done some – really good introspective work in your life. And I'm a believer. Um, mm -hmm. So totally get that. There's, there's something about like, as that connection with God, um, and this is like not a topic. I don't think I've ever yeah. talked about on She Shield, but um, you know, as that connection deepens with God, like I definitely find myself being more introspective of like my life as a whole uh, and my purpose, even with like my own students and, um, the firearms classes and it gives, it gives a lot more meaning to it than, than there already is. So mm -hmm. totally actually relate to that. And, um, it's nice to kind of like bring that to the surface a little bit. Um, and if you're listening and you can't relate to that, that's totally fine. It's whatever it is for you. If that's just Still introspection on the level. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that's like, you know, psychoanalysis yeah. of your life too, if that's what that is for you, that's great. Um, but yeah, Fun thank fact, you so much for a... sharing that. I was an atheist until I was 2018. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, I come from, yeah. I come from a journey of understanding and living the, and, and stepping in those footsteps. You definitely so, do. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you remember exactly. God's God doesn't call the qualified. God mm -hmm. qualifies the called. I like that. Yep. He qualifies. I'm going to have to think about that he one. Who call, he, who he calls. So yeah. I don't remember what part of scripture that, that is, but I remember, uh, I remember my pastor, uh, preaching that many moons ago and that, that just always stuck in my head. I love that. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. That's incredible. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm glad that you have a good relationship with that now. Sometimes it just takes an event or a person or, you know, a calling to get there. Um, mm -hmm. I think it says a lot when you've come from a place where you weren't in tune with that and now you are right. that's there's yeah. a lot to be said about that so exactly. yeah that's awesome you really do have <laughs> that holistic approach so yeah. that's incredible and um for those that not to pivot uh too fast here but i do want to make sure we give it a little attention for those that don't know what the guardian conference is would you mm -hmm. be willing to speak to that yeah so to, to the best of my ability right because i'm not a um yeah. I'm not part of the like uh, concealcarry.com team per se. I'm just an affiliate and ambassador, I guess, would be the best uh, sure. title for that. 
Um, yeah. So Riley so Bowman. Perfect. Yeah. So Riley Bowman yeah. and Jacob Paulson, uh, they are business partners in many brands. The main one being concealcarry.com. And they wanted a conference for uh, gun toting, defensive minded civilians. Right. Well, you don't have to be a civilian. You can be law enforcement, military. Right. That like, cause Right. We're here. We're here as well. Um, but that's like that's their core belief, like making sure civilians uh, exercise their right to carry in a respect, a responsible uh, guardian style of way. Like we the, the guardians of our nation, of our families, of our core beliefs, uh, so on and so forth. So it's a big training event. It's three day yes. events. And it's an Oklahoma City Gun Club, Oklahoma, obviously. And uh, there's a, a buffet, if you will, of instructors there. That have all been vetted by the Riley and his his team. For those who don't know, Riley Bowman uh, has been a um, cornerstone in the training uh, community for many many years, and so uh, his his opinion and 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 life lessons are I, I hold them to a very high standard, uh, and mm-hmm. I, like I I believe every word that comes out of his mouth because I he is that type of guy you can trust anything he says. So anyway, he has I put together, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, he has put together a uh, a three day event with some of the best uh, instructors there are out there. It's not just shooty stuff. You got some, uh, you got some martial arts mixed in. You got some um, <clears throat> classroom stuff. Um, I'm not super familiar with all of it, so I don't want to screw that all up. But no, uh, okay. yeah, it, you can just go to the Guardian Conference uh, website and look at all that stuff. Um, you can also access it and sign up via the SynergyShooting.com website as well um, under the awesome. Partners page. Uh, but yeah, so I don't misspeak or miss anything up or uh, you know forget to mention someone and their feelings get hurt. Uh, just go to the no, website and look at yeah. <laughs> there really are so many instructors. Totally so many. fair. Um, I'm yep. sure even if Riley was on the podcast right now, he would he'd probably be like, oh no, did I miss anyone? Just because he's, you know, he's very caring. But <laughs> yep. um, all of uh, that information will be linked in the show notes. So that yeah. will be available. Um, along with all the information on how to get in contact with you, Tyler, mm-hmm. and uh, your website and um, your specific, uh, if you have a page on the Guardian Conference, I think they just list all the instructors out, but we'll okay. definitely have a link to that. So yeah. whoever listening, if you're interested, I think they have a promotion going on right now. If you sign up this early since it is in September, I think it's mm-hmm. a, it's less expensive right now. So if that's something that interests you, definitely check that out. Um, I have loved this conversation. I love your <laughs> teaching too. philosophy. I've loved hearing what your plans are for this year as well. And I mean, just imagine what, where you'll be five years from now. You are like aggressively trying to fix some uh, training, I think... I guess just, yeah, yeah, training gaps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yes. That's the word (laughs) training gaps. And I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, For those interested, please check out his website and socials. I'll link all of it below. Um, Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about today that we didn't get to? I want to make sure that we covered it all. I think we did. Um, Okay. Man, I have uh, like... I try, I try to give enough of each little thing that I wanted to talk about and be respectful yeah. for time. And the fact that I, I speak almost at the speed of auctioneer kind of helps, but it may have no, it's some people, <laughs> you know, how people I'm listen to, to podcasts at like 1.25 or 1.5. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nobody listens to mine that way. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. You know, I'm thinking my, so my family is Cuban. Half of my family is Cuban oh, really? and they, they speak at the speed of light. So to me, you, you're speaking with like a, like a normal and a normal like Pace. way. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm following very well, but it might be because I'm used to that. Yeah. Um, and they think I, I speak like super slow and I'm like, no man, like people tell me to <laughs> slow down all the time. Um, yep. and so it's def- I think it's relative, but I don't know. You've said it a few yeah. times, so I want to address it. I don't think you're speaking too quickly at oh, all. Thank um, you. <laughs> I think you take your time when you talk. I think that's that's good because um, I sure as hell don't. And uh, I was telling – who's I? I think I was telling Caleb Giddings today on the podcast. Um, my grandma used to tell me that we have two ears and one mouth for a reason. And I swear I still hear her voice in my head like – 
every time I talk. So I'm like, yep. did I yep. take long enough? So yep. you've got a nice cadence and it's easy to <laughs> cadence and it's easy to follow. Appreciate so it. Don't, don't uh, do that to yourself, but yeah, no, that's awesome. Absolutely. And, um, I'm glad you got to come on and tell your story and tell your philosophy. Uh, before you go though, is Mm -hmm. there anything you would like to send the listeners off with? Yeah. Go figure out who it is that you are and be okay with it. Like whatever, whatever you think you're trying to be, stop it. Mm -hmm. Just, just be yourself. (laughs) Cause I promise you, I'll respect you way more. Your wife or slash husband will love you way more. Just be yourself. It's all good, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I just think of those, there's like a TikTok trend going around right now. Um, Not to downplay what you said. That's incredibly oh, important. Um, But on like a funny note, have you seen the trend where it's like someone's like, they're stressed about the email they sent and then they zoom out and it's like Google Earth and they go from like their house to like the atmosphere to like the earth to like the Milky Way. And it's like, relax <laughs> you know and it's yeah. like just be yourself because like everything is so um yeah. short-lived anyway all that stuff so it anyway is. no you make a very good point that's a great place to start and as someone who literally quit med school to enter this industry at 23 um that uh that's definitely something i wish someone would have told me so Thank you for sharing that. That's very important. Tyler, I'm so excited. Mm. I get to see you not too long from now. Although like September does feel like it's forever away, but we're going to like literally blink blink and it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. literally. Um, Yeah, absolutely. And uh, out of accountability, just to tell you this, my Lisa and I are uh, training for the tactical games. And um, I say that knowing that I could barely do a freaking like ring muscle up like one of the scaled versions today in CrossFit. So fingers crossed, Uh, but we are training for that. um, And that will be in September as well. So basically it's the guardian conference and then South Carolina tactical games are like the week after that. So I will hopefully you were talking about your rifle class and I was like, damn, I wish that was sooner. Like the guardian conference was sooner. So I could take that like well before the tactical games, but it'll maybe I can jump in on it. I'll have to see if what my schedule is, but um just uh, let me know when you want to do a Zoom, and we'll like uh, I can I can hook you up Fuck with yeah. some dry fire rifle stuff. We can make sure your uh, rifle is that. kitted out, ready, proper, ready to go. And God I'll just bless. give you some <laughs> cheat codes on manipulations because I I've seen a that. lot of people lose a lot of time and a lot of placements just off of poor yeah. manipulations. Uh, they're not they're not moving the gun yes. efficiently. They are way too slow when they're not pulling the trigger. Um, Two yeah. gun shooting is my jam. Like I am, Are you for I am, real right now? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm the dude to chase okay. whenever we show up with rifles and pistols. Uh, I suck okay. with just the pistols because everybody else is really good with just pistols. But as soon as, yeah. as soon as we uh, add a rifle in there, yeah, it's, it's, it's game on. Okay. You're, you're, everybody else is hunting for second place. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank God. Um, I actually texted Mike today, Seeklander, and I was like, Hey man, what should I do in the live fire app? Cause I need to start training rifle stuff. And he sent Mm me, he told me about one of the courses I should look into. So, um, that's kind of where I was going to start, but I would love some more one-on-one stuff. So I will absolutely reach out to you. Um, and I'll share that as well. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about that, but thank you so much because Lisa and I were on the phone the other day and we were like, what, what do we do? Like, where do we start? So, um, and we're both like limited time wise. She's a doctoral student. So this would be really cool. To oh, connect these on, smart so. people. My yeah. wife has a master's. <laughs> she's, yeah, that. she's incredible. Like, I'm a, I don't even have a bachelor's. I was a mechanical engineering dropout as well. So. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. I literally cannot say anything. I, I did my undergrad for the purpose of med school. So, I mean, sh- I feel yep. that. Um, dude, I think about alternative timelines all the time. And I'm like, what would have, like, what would have come of me, like, from me? Sorry, I not make any sense. What would have come from me? That, anyway, I'm not even going to. English at this point. Does it put you in this weird third person perspective and like you can start seeing like, like, oh man. What if I had dropped out earlier? What if I had jumped into the gun industry earlier? Like maybe Mm -hmm. I could have been further along by now. And like, I I don't like to think in the lack mentality. All the time. Cause I'm, I just turned 34 yesterday. And so I'm like, God, like all these people are like Christian Seiler has, I don't know how many national and world championships. And the, like the dude can just now legally buy alcohol. Like, like, what? Man, Dang it. if I need a it's a dangerous machine. game. 
That's yeah. dangerous, man. But if you also think about it, it's like, would you have? Oh, man, we could go in this forever. But, but then you start, like, then you start about, feeling bad because you're like, uh, I don't know. God's timing's perfect, and it's it's almost exactly. like um, um, um. Like trying to say I would know better than he does, and that's it's yep. like, oh, I'm sorry, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> fall back in line here. Yes, I totally feel that. I think it's normal to wonder. Um, sure, yeah. I think that's part of it. But yeah, it, may, it really makes you kind of appreciate where you're at, and it's so it's just all relative. I think you're exactly where you need to be. I mm -hmm. think this episode is. Um, evidence of that from you if your background of tutoring your spiritual background physical background it's all led to this one point and now you're just trying to get it out there and tell people yeah. about it so absolutely. sounds like you're in the right place at the right time so but it's easy for me gospel. to say that's it yes absolutely <laughs> yeah absolutely well thank you tyler so much for coming on i really 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 appreciate it it was a pleasure i loved it thank you I'm so glad. Awesome. And if you're listening and you want to see the entire video of this episode, I really should start saying this in the beginning. Uh, you can go to our YouTube <laughs> channel at She Shield Pod. I'm like realizing that right now. Um, we now have full video as long as the videos take. They normally do. Uh, you can also see episode highlights made by Lisa um, on Instagram and TikTok at She Shield Pod. Also some YouTube shorts. We are getting back to repurposing it there. Also on the Live Fire app. All resources mentioned, including how to find Tyler will be linked in the show notes, which are the notes below the pod. If you like the podcast, you can help by liking, subscribing, and leaving a review, guys. Even just hitting those five stars on whatever platform you're listening on helps so much. I don't know about you, but whenever I find a new podcast, whenever I see them have like even like a hundred reviews, like I know that that means people liked that podcast enough to go like it and, and rate it. So please take the, just a second to do that. Um, if you or anyone, you know, is a firearms owner experiencing a crisis, look into holdmyguns.org. They are an organization that will connect you with a local gun shop or FFL to store your firearm for you. The link to access their website and to find a storage location partner is available in the show notes. Thank you for listening. In the meantime, stay safe and stay vigilant.